Hey guys, welcome back. It's our fourth and last day on this Pisgah trip, and I believe that we've saved the best for last. This ride is definitely going into my favorites playlist. Today, we're riding Heartbreak Ridge via the old Mitchell Toll Road. Google Earth clocks the stats of this ride at 4,400 feet climbed and an epic 5,400 feet descended. At the top, you'll border the parkway and get the chance to look back on some amazing views. After this, the real fun starts, as you ride over to Heartbreak Ridge and make your way down the spine of the mountain for what seems like endless, fast downhill. If you're ever going to attempt this, look for a ride log on trail forks of somebody that's done it, because it's quite confusing to navigate. There's a ton of intersections along the way. This route starts with extremely steep climbing at first, and then it mellows out to a decent grade with some ups and downs but it's definitely trending uphill for a very long time. It is also worth noting that this road closes October 1st to January 1st for bear hunting season, so plan around this. We just made it to a nice overlook. Wow, the view is unbelievable. After stopping for some pictures along the route and a lot more climbing that I'm not gonna bore you with, oh, the campers, Nice, heartbreak. Looks like some walking dead shit. These obviously haven't moved in a ton of time. It's the beginning of our first descent. This isn't Heartbreak Ridge yet. This is still part of the old Mitchell Toll Road, but it's a nice reward for all the climbing that we've done thus far. And it is gnarly. After some more traversing, you'll make it to a flat spot that's perfect for a break. If you so desire, you can pedal to the parkway, but there isn't much to be gained by it in my opinion. Instead, we used it as a chance to eat our packed sandwiches lunch, and then continue on to Heartbreak Ridge proper. Well, we made it to the top. How long was that? Three? Three and a half? So two hours and 55 minutes in movement, three hours and 30 minutes total. 11 miles. That's insane. Okay, so after a bunch of time, lots of climbing, and a few rest breaks along the way, we have finally made it to Heartbreak Ridge, which is what we're gonna follow all the way down back into town. So if you haven't yet noticed, when you use this route, this is a descent that you earn. The climb is quite manageable and the grades are not crazy once you pass that first push, but it requires a good amount of endurance. If this is something you wanna try out, make sure that you can pedal a good three hours, carry lots of water, and bring snacks, lunch, etc. Also plan on an early start to give yourself plenty of opportunity before the sun comes down. Last but not least, carry spares for the basics, like a master link, a tube, some bacon strips, a derailleur hanger, and obviously a multi-tool. This is a super remote ride, you really don't want to get stuck out here. I really can't overstate how much it would suck to have to walk down this especially when you consider everything you had to go through to earn yourself your way to the top. I'm following Phil who is on a chameleon. I've got to say, this shit on a hardtail at that speed is ballsy. Because I'm working hard and I have 150 mil front and rear. Heartbreak Ridge is naturally split into two by this massive unexpected climb. In all honesty, it's rideable. We just didn't know that it was there, so we didn't power into it and preferred to just push. A few yards after the top, you come to what in my opinion is the best view spot on the whole trail. This is another good place to refuel and get some awesome pictures. My favorite part of this ride is what came after this stop. Perhaps the trail is more fun, or perhaps it's because I had already warmed up at this point but I felt much faster despite the trail being narrower and more exposed.
There's a pretty well-known section where the trees are perfectly aligned so that it's nearly impossible to get through without clipping one particular tree. Despite it being the first time that I had ridden here, I had seen a few videos of this place, so I recognized this section immediately and I backed off a bit. And well... I still hit it, but nothing serious. Did you smack your bars? He didn't, but the trail had to mess with us just a bit. You okay? I got you. A bike first? Yeah, okay. I'm good. In the end, it was nothing, much. but it was one of those typical mistakes that we made. Okay, back on it. Get through the hard section, no problem. Fall down, stepping off the bike. This section is super narrow. And while it's not very visible in the camera, it's also rudy off camber. To me, it really added to the fun. You had to stay on your toes to navigate this section as you deal with diagonal roots covered with leaves and the winding left and right of the trail. Quite the elusive techie flow combination. Along the way, you'll encounter some switchbacks. But they're nothing major. You can pass. I like having the follow cam. If you saw my pilot rock video for reference, those are much, much tougher. On this ride, we've yet to encounter the real switchback build section. Starglap is coming up in just a bit. This whole section of the trail gets super fast. The rootiness goes down a bit, so you have a chance to let go of everything and just let it float. There aren't any particularly challenging features, but you will find some down trees that have been converted into small drops. However, it takes knowing this to be able to send it. If this is a trail that you ride regularly, or you're willing to stop and spot them, most people can drop these. On this day, we didn't really feel like it, so we walked a few along the way. That's doable. To the right. Officially out of Heartbreak Ridge, now into Star Gap. As you can already tell, to get back to the road we took Star Gap. There's a couple different ways to get down from here, but we went with the short option this time. That was a little sketchy. I was going so slow. The character of the trail here changes a bit. Despite the fact that I think it's technically easier, with the more open vegetation and the vast views, the exposure got to my head a lot more than before. I took the wrong line because I was too concerned with the exposure there. And there's one other thing that changes enough that I would actually call it the staple of this trail. I nice, love these switchbacks. And if you don't love them per se, you might as well make an effort to actually enjoy them because there's a lot of them. You got it. I'm not even showing you all of them here on this video. And I'm actually happy. After reviewing the footage, I was doing the last ones much faster than the first. So yay for progress. I thought there was a skinny to ride it, but no. As the trail comes to an end, there's one last challenge, a nice rocky feature. In hindsight, I should have stopped and scoped it before, as I have to admit I did scare myself a bit, but it all worked out okay this time. Yeah, I want to scope this first. That's good, man. It's just right there. The reason you should scope it is because there's actually a few lines that you can take down. I still think the one that I chose was the easiest, but it may have been a bit of luck that I just went that way. Beautiful. That was sick, man. You did like the perfect line. I was gonna... It's flattened out quite a bit at this point. We're following a creek, the one that we just crossed. 
I'm pretty sure this means we're basically at the bottom of Star Gap. I'd really like your opinion on this episode because this was so much fun to film. I hope watching it is just as much fun because I love the experience. Absolutely brutal day. I think we set out at like 10.30 in the morning and it's four right now. Really sick ride, guys. Truly worth it. So yeah, I hope you had fun coming along with us to ride Heartbreak Ridge. I will see you for the next one and happy riding. Well, now that we're here, I can say it. No mechanicals. That was so great. Everything breaks and falls apart.